Hey everybody, Russ the Millennial Numismatist here, and you are in my office at Harlan J. Burke Limited in the heart of downtown Chicago. Um, as you guys know, I am of course your friendly neighborhood bullion dealer, and one thing that we see a lot, one thing I've talked about already, is Form 8300. So if you don't know what Form 8300 is, Form 8300 is an IRS form. If you spend more than $10,000 at a business, most businesses, um, but especially bullion dealers, any place that you can, it is an easy target for money laundering. This form has to be submitted when you spend over $10,000 in cash. So, again, this is an anti-money laundering form. Um, it's really not that big of a deal. The DOJ can't look at it unless they have a warrant and you're, you know, it, it, unless you're really doing something shady and they think that you could be involved in a RICO case or a money laundering case, they can't even touch it without a warrant. Um, I know that a lot of people are super sketched out by this. I am too. Um, I'm not a great lover of our federal government and what they do. However, on this, I, I understand. Um, so Form 8300 is an anti-money laundering form. So every bullion dealer has to have what's called an AML, an anti-money laundering plan. And these AMLs look different for everybody. Um, there are different requirements, basically. It's, it's a lot about how you do your volume and all these things. This AML plan is a real bear, and you have to be a stickler with it, because if you're not a stickler with it, we can get in trouble. So, like, for example, I'll talk about our AML plan a little bit. My AML plan requires that if you spend $3,000 with cash, uh, with $3,000 in cash with me, I have to take a copy of your ID. Now, that is not so that the government can track you. What that is for is so that when my accountant and my AML compliance manager looks at it, they can see that we, quote, know our customers. By getting your ID, I know you. You've been in my store. You're a physical person. If I had to, I could probably pick you out of a lineup. So generally, if you walk into my store for the first couple times, if you're buying gold, you know, you're spending a few thousand dollars with me, I'll take your ID um, for the first one or two times. Um, and then I have it on file. And then I never have to do it again because I know you were establishing a relationship. So if I ever get subpoenaed, I can, you know, legitimately say, yes, I know John Smith. He's a good customer. He comes in. Here is me very obviously knowing him. I have his ID on file. You know, we've built a relationship all these years, blah, blah, blah. So... An AML plan isn't really anything to be scared of. Um, it's it's really more of a protection, one, for um, the business, and two, really for the people of the United States as a whole. Um, when this 8300 thing came about, um, you know, it really was in response to the Patriot Act. Not a great lover of the Patriot Act, but I understand why the government wants to not enable terrorists and other bad actors from siphoning money and laundering money um, and making their money, you know, legal. So I understand why they do it. I know it's a big pain in the butt, um, but unfortunately it's something we have to, we have to comply with. Um, I love you guys. I love this community. I love stackers. I love coin collectors. I love everybody. If you know me, if you've ever been to my store, you know I'll work with you. You know I will do all these things. Um, you know I'm a very transparent guy. I post my prices. We talk about it. This is the problem though. This is one hill I will die on. If you're not willing to give me ID when I have to have ID and you're not willing to fill out a form 8300, I can't do business with you. Um, this has made a lot of people mad. Um, I've been called many of things, um, which I find quite funny. Um, but at the end of the day, I have 13 people that work in this company. And if I get us audited by the IRS or I get us closed down because I'm not following the law, 13 people and their families have just lost their livelihoods. And this is a business that has been here for 60 years. And I'm not willing to do that. Um, I like eating. My family likes eating. And all the people that work for us like eating. So no, I am not going to waive the requirements just because we're buddies, because we're boys, all those things. So what I really want to stress in this video is we don't really want to do it either, but we have to. So we do. Um, but there are plenty of ways, like I discussed in my other video, to not ever have to do a Form 8300. You're more than welcome to pay with a cashier's check. As long as it's under $10,000, it's not considered cash. It's perfectly fine. Um, if you want to pay with a personal check, super fine too. Not a big deal. I'd love to take your personal check. I'm going to hold it until we've established a relationship, but then your check is good as gold. Um, so there's, there's a lot of different ways to avoid 8300 if you really want to. But the AML, the anti-money laundering plan, is an industry standard. If you go somewhere and you ask them about their AML and they kind of look at you funny, um, you should be careful who you're doing business with. Because if they're not willing to follow federal regulations, if they're not willing to not go to jail, 
you might want to be careful who you're dealing with. Again, I get it. This isn't fun. I don't want to do it. I don't particularly trust the government with this crap either. I spent 14 years as a government employee in the U.S. Army. We're kind of crazy. Unfortunately, it's the price of doing business. Um, hope you guys learned something. I know this is a quick video. Um, I was just thinking about it because, you know, I'm updating my stuff and all those things. Um, if you want to learn more, please hit that follow button, subscribe, leave a like, and a comment. Thanks, guys.